Lindsay, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Very Charles. good. Yes, it's very yes, nice to meet you. you. I've um, I've watched a lot of your things uh, oh. up until now and, and especially now. Uh, Skylines 3 was cool. It was so great. You were awesome Thank in that movie. Thank um, you. Thank you so I had read much. The, I had read the director's statement in particular, and Liam said such kind things about you. He basically said the movie wouldn't exist without you. And <laughs> you're doing so much. I mean, the action sequences, but also your face is so expressive. You really, there's humor in it. You bring a lot to this performance. What, what did it mean to you? Oh man, you know, it was truly a, a tour de force, um, the whole experience. And you know, I never, I've never had a lead before. Uh, like this amount of um, responsibility and, and uh, exposure in a project. And, you know, it's always been like, you know, a dream of mine, but there was a, a big part of me that was like, you know, I don't wanna say scared, but like, you know, I felt very good in my supporting. I felt like I, I you know, it was always really great at being a strong supporting um, actor and, and character in projects. And I was like, you know what? I, I need to push myself and, uh, and really try to, you know, expand myself to be a lead and be like a leading lady because that's something I, I want to do. And uh, yeah, I just learned so much. I learned so much about, um, you know, pacing yourself through a project because it, it is a marathon. And, you know, when you are a lead, you don't have any days off. Um, you know, we were filming for almost three months and the last month we were doing like six day weeks and I was in every single scene. So, you know, there's no breaks, there's no days off. There's, um, you don't have time to rest. You don't have time to be sick. You don't have time to, you know, be off one day. You always have to bring it because you only have that day to film what we need. So it just taught me a lot about pace and a lot about preparation. And, um, and also, you know, the movie is in the role is so dynamic. Like you said, you know, there's, there's a physicality to it. There's such emotionality to it. And there's also this mental aspect of, of Rose really growing and learning um, how to become the leader she becomes in the end, you know? And, uh, you know, she's very much a reluctant hero at first because she is just traumatized really. And, and you know, people forget that she really is only like 17 in, in the beginning, you know, and her whole life she grew up in this, in this government, you know, base camp world where she's this superhuman weapon for what she is taught for the good of mankind and good of humanity. But, you know, when that's all you know, when that's all you're taught and you start to really grow up and question around you, question the authority and question Am I doing the right thing? And, you know, it's a lot for a young woman to grapple with. And, and so I really enjoyed, you know, it reminds me of growing up and I love the coming of age uh, uh, aspect to the, to the film. And, you know, because I think it resonates that a lot of us feel lost and we're just trying to find our true self. And when we do, that's when our true power is really unleashed. So it was a very cool, very cool, very um, complex role. I want to quote you to you. I was watching your um, San Diego Comic Con fan favorites panel, and you said, oh. something, you said something really fascinating and uh, off the cuff as well, too. And it was so um, meaningful. I kept coming back to it the idea that, you know, when we watch TV and we watch movies, that we see ourselves or we want to see ourselves. It's like mm -hmm. reality, but, um, you know, a, a heightened version of it but still is a mirror and we look to it. And you said you did that yourself. Um, what do you think of, in particular about this? You were talking about your, sh your series at the time, but what do you think about this movie? It does project very positive messages. What do you think people will get out of it in that way? At least from what I got out of it, a big message for me was about um, being true to yourself. And, uh, and when you stifle it, you know, that's when it manifests poorly. And that was interesting. It was like Rose was, was stifling her true nature and that's what was kind of killing her. She wasn't really accepting who she was and embodying her true self. And so, you know, 
And then, you know, you see Rose go the other way and, it, and it's kind of evil and it's almost like it's, it's too much. And, and it's also, again, not true to her. She's being controlled by others and, and doing evil bidding, you know, either by the government or by the matriarch. And so again, it's like, you can't, ha you can't be controlled by others. You have to be true to yourself. And that's only when she really, you know, she's awakened by the tie of her brother and her family and, um, her heart is when she is able to combine the both. So big messages for me, again, was, you know, when we're growing up, we, we can feel lost and we can go through experiences that maybe, at least for me, I've been through experiences that I wasn't ready for. And it affected me and it made me question myself and it made me doubt myself. And, you know, it felt very, um, I carried a lot of hurt with me for a long time. And I had to really work through that and honor myself and honor my abilities and my true personality and true nature and true heart to really um, to find happiness and to find an even greater strength in evolution than the person I was before. So, you know, I hope people see the evolution she goes through and are reminded that they too can always evolve, but you know, we have to learn to evolve and with learning there's growth and usually growth unfortunately you know is painful is painful and um but you can overcome it and you know you see rose struggle but in the end she prevails so i hope people feel a message of prevailing and and a message of um perseverance perseverance and also a message of um truth of, of only they can answer for themselves I was watching um, some of your training. Um, it was actually for Walker. There's a video that you're, you're training and going pretty hard. And I can imagine for, for this, uh, for Walker, for the 100 in general, you really put a lot into it in terms of training, in terms of physicality. What was, what was um, there's some incredible scenes in which, you know, you're using this sort of alien technology as well as your own, but you really seem to have a sense of physicality in this movie. What considerations do you give to that? I would say, you know, the, the hundred was a really, it was an interesting training ground for me because it was such an adventure, um, you know, high impact show, but you know, spoiler alert, my character is paralyzed after the first season. So I was really benched in a lot of that, uh, you know, very active stunt sequences, you know, and I was, I was, I was sad, I was jealous. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I went out on my own and I was like, okay, well, this is something I have an interest in and I, I wanna learn. So I started learning Thai kickboxing just on my off time um, Muay Thai. And I really kind of fell in love with like the martial art of it and just how interesting it is and um, how complex and, and difficult it is. So it's just something I've always kept up with over the years. And, you know, I find it very, empowering for the roles I play because they are very strong um, uh, characters, right? And I think there's something about the confidence you can feel in your body knowing that if you have to defend yourself, you can. And I also think it's, it's very important for every woman to know how to throw a punch, you know? Just to have that confidence that, you know, if, if it is a scary situation they're in, um, they can defend themselves. Cause I remember feeling young and, and not and feeling very defenseless in the world. So it was something I love that my characters don't feel. And that was something that I, Lindsay also wanted to feel um, in myself. So, you know, it's just, an, you know, it's just, and it's interesting and it's, and it's fun and it's, and it's a great sport. Um, you know, and I've been lucky that I've gotten to use these skills in a lot of my projects. So I really, I really enjoy it. It's been pretty cool. And you really do keep the conversation open in terms of mental health. I was watching your How Are You Feeling Today video. I mean, you know, mm. during this time of the pandemic, a lot of mm -hmm. people are really struggling with that. Mm -hmm. How much of a consideration do you give um, within your roles as well, or even connecting with your roles to mental health? Mm -hmm. I think it's huge. I think, um, you know, especially it's interesting, Rose was a, you know, she went through a really traumatic event and you have to look at, <clears throat> you have to remember, unfortunately we don't get quite get to see too much of it, 
and we don't get to quite see too much of her upbringing, but kind of like what I said earlier, like, you know, she's been through a lot and she's had a really interesting upbringing um, and environment in, you know, parents that, you know, she had Frank Grillo, so that was, <laughs> he was a great dad, but you know, um, the Colonel wasn't. So she's had really interesting role models and influences in her life that shaped her. And, you know, just my own journey with mental health. Um, it's all, you know, a lot of it is experiences and is your environment. Um, in my opinion, you know, I'm not a doctor or anything, but what you've gone through will shape you, your experiences. And so I look at what my characters have been through um, to try to bring a, tr a truthful response to how they be. And, you know, if you look at the hundred, there was, I'd say probably after season four, I was playing Raven a lot more raw um, than I had in the other seasons, a lot more kind of uh, cracked open in, in the sense of um, she had just been through so much and had so much trauma, you know, I feel like it wears a person down and it wasn't until the seventh season she goes through such an arc of learning uh, if you watch to how to how to come kind of full circle and reconcile with herself and the things she's done and uh, the things that have happened to her and so just in my journey of my life you know I go to therapy and I meditate and I journal um, and I reflect a lot about my life and how I can be a better person and how much my life and experiences have shaped me and how important it is to continuously um, nourish that part of you. You know, I think it's very, I've been through times and I would have some where I was very much of a, you know, I just pushed a lot of things away. I suppressed, I kept going. I thought, you know, that was strength was just go, go, go and, and be strong and don't cry. And, you know, you can handle it and don't be weak. Right. And then it, it made me really, but I was really unhappy because I was really carrying a lot of weight on me, you know, and I thought that was a badge of honor. And then it, you know, it really kind of broke me down for a bit and I just wasn't myself for a long time. And I realized it's because I was just weighed down a lot. So I had to do a lot of my unpacking and a lot of my self growth um, and self healing through, through therapy and, and through uh, changes in my lifestyle and really looking at um, my life in ways that I can continuously nurture and nourish myself because I wasn't doing that for so long. So, you know, in acting, yes, mental health and um, a character's mentality plays such a huge role in, in that being of that person, just as much as it plays a huge role in our lives, in the being of ourselves. So I always try to look at, be very conscious and be very aware of what my characters have been through and where they came from and what they're going through and how they can, and how they change and how they grow. And, um, you know, it's not always good. Sometimes, you know, it's a, it's a struggle, but I think that's important to show because that's true to our humanity. Some, sometimes we struggle, but lots of times, you know, we prevail. So that's a long answer. <laughs> great answer. So interestingly, between sort of the end of uh, Skylines and, I mean, picking it up now, um, you directed. You directed an episode of The 100, and I was reading about how difficult it was to get to that point, to the director's journey. It was a whirlwind, and your episode was great. Uh, the Queen's Gambit. It's going to be hard to Google it now because of the show. But, I know. Um, I did it first. <laughs> yes. What is, what, is that, what is that journey meant for you? What do you you know, are you going to continue to bring that in? And what consideration do you give when you're a director, when you're shadowing into a movie like this, when you have a new consideration of space? So directing was, you know, one of the most challenging experiences of my life, but it was also one of the most fulfilling because it really showed, it really taught me so much about stamina um, and also just how capable I am, you know, for, I've been interested in directing for years and, you know, and that's why I had assisted and shadowed for 
three years because I had that interest, but I was, I held myself back from being like, I actually wanted to do it because I felt like, no, no, I'm not ready. I'm, I don't know enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not ready. I can't do it. Like I would say that to myself. And then it wasn't until the last year I was like, man, this is the last year. It's my last chance. <laughs> Um, you know, and in the beginning, I actually technically wasn't supposed to direct. And then so it kind of was um, a lot of different occurrences that ended up me having to um, step in and have this opportunity. And yeah, not feeling prepared at all. <laughs> and, um, but it also, you know, it was a sink or swim moment. And um, I thankfully <laughs> learned to swim. Um, but yeah, I think those moments are important and it taught me like sometimes we just need to do things when we don't feel ready like just do it just jump just leap you know and I think you know I forgot who says it but you know fortune favors the bold and so we can go out there and, and just do it then lot, lots of times it's okay you know it's good it's okay <laughs> um but now you know I look at it taught me a lot about acting and it taught me um, things I didn't know of how I can bring, I can help my director, you know, um, in his journey and his or her journey. I've just had some, our last director was male, that's why he was in my brain. Um, but anyone's journey is directing of how I can help them with my performance. You know, I can favor an angle. I can work a, a movement into a shot for them. I can, you know, I was always a very uh, instinctual actor. So I didn't always, they call it continuity. I wouldn't always match my physicality because I was just trying something new, but that doesn't work when you're editing, you know, you can lose a lot of great footage because it won't match. So I learned a lot of very technical ways that I can just help my, my future directors. And so I was really appreciative about that. And, um, you know, I also, I, you know, it's interesting when you're on episodic television, you have a new director every episode and they're all different. They also have such different styles, such different techniques. And it's really cool getting to learn and glean from all of them um, something, you know, something interesting. So yeah, I have um, complete aspirations to direct again. I hope to direct on Walker, the new series I'm on and hopefully other series too. I think, um, you know, I really enjoyed it. And um, the pandemic kind of threw a wrench in some of my plans, but now hopefully, you know, we're getting out of it and um, I can start making some more of those plans a reality. I was gonna say, it's been an incredible year for you in terms of ending one show and being the lead in this movie and starting up another one. So you are making the best of this time, it seems. <laughs> Thank you. Being very honest and open about it, which I think is incredible as well, too. And Thank you. sharing with people. So I, I wish you the best uh, in your journey from here. It's been really Thank fantastic. You, it's been fantastic talking to you and hearing from you. So. You too. Thank you so much. Quite a treat. All right. Take care. Yeah. Have a great holiday. Yeah, happy holidays too. <laughs>